Hey, what's up you guys? It's Nicholas Lionrider, and welcome back to Capron Park Zoo. I am your host, Nicholas Lionrider, and as always, my co-host, Leaf Productions, is here. Hello, I am your co-host today. Welcome back to Capron Park Zoo. Yeah, so uh, as you saw in last video, I am back, and so I am uh, basically picking up I, I don't want to say picking up where we last left off, because I've kind of done this before, in off-camera, um, before mm -hmm. I went on my break, I actually started these episodes. So, I, if you actually remember, like, a few episodes back, maybe four episodes or so, I mentioned, like, oh, I'll probably do the Asian water monitor habitat. And it's because I did start it at the time, and then obviously I went on my hiatus, and then Leaf took over. He kind of looped around the, the back half of the zoo. And so we kind of did a full, you know, U-turn. You know, we've gone through, you know, the, <laughs> you know, llamas, sloth bear, lions. And now I'm going to basically backtrack to do the uh, areas that I kind of missed the first time. So that is going to be the silvery cheek hornbill, the Asian water monitor, and the... Uh, now, unfortunately, passed away Golden Lion Tamarin, Cortez. Mm -hmm. Let him rest in peace. He was a very good little Tamarin. Um, Indeed he was. But, yeah, so we are basically working on, um, kind of, I mean, I liked doing these little habitats because I normally didn't get to play around with a lot of, like, the smaller props and stuff mm -hmm. until now just because we, we were focusing on, like, a lot of the bigger habitats. But they are always, they're fun to do, but they are definitely a challenge. And um, ultimately, at the end of this video, you end up seeing me essentially needing to redo the entire building <laughs> in a weird way. Because um, to compensate, I had to raise the entire roof of the building to oh my God, get make... your party on. <laughs> yeah, just to make everything work out. But, you know, to start off, I basically wanted to do the first habitat, which is the Silvery Cheeked Hornbill. Funnily enough, it's just labeled as Hornbill at the zoo. Um, <laughs> Had to do a little bit of digging to find out the right species, but... That is true. So they have one female, and she is obviously, around this time of year, not on exhibit because she is a tropical spirit species, so she's backstage. But come spring or roughly summer... She'll be back on exhibit in this kind of little aviary outside of what I will say is a, a part of the zoo that a lot of people kind of overlook. And mm -hmm. I understand because it's it, it looks like a backstage building because it is technically a backstage building. So this entire uh, building that we're working on is technically the holding for the North American River Otters. But along the side doors, there are basically entrances for certain select animals so on one side we have the asian um, water monitor and then along the other side they had they used to have some other habitats i think they mentioned that like maybe there was like lemurs back there back in the day or something but obviously right now it's closed off to the public and um yeah so basically nothing uh, nothing back there right now uh, especially because it used to just be like, oh, you get to see the Golden Lion Tamarin. That is also not there anymore, so <laughs> it is literally just empty right now. <laughs> I will say, I'm sure they're probably working on it to get it all, like, Yeah, they'll, pro up. they'll probably do something, because, like, you know, but... I'm sure they'll probably get a replacement for the Tamarin. Like, I can't imagine they'll just, you know, do nothing with that, and then, oh, you know. Certain, yeah. There was, there was construction and stuff. I'm, I'm sure they'll do something back there. I always love sections like these because it really does highlight a lot of smaller animals and I feel like that's such a like crucial part to Caper Park Zoo's like species list because they have a lot of awesome smaller animals be it like I don't know the tamarins were a really awesome one but the lemurs the serval everything in like Sadler everything in like the jungle house that's, like, one of the reasons why I love Capron Park Zoo so much is because of the smaller animals. And because of that, a lot of people tend to overlook them, like you said before. Uh, the Tamarin Exhibit, the Hornbill, and the Asian Water Monitor, they don't really get too much traction as the rest of the zoo does. But I feel like because of that, you do get some better interactions with the animals. Uh, I remember the last time we actually went with Dill, 
we were like right there with the Asian water monitor, and he was so active with us. That and is that was true. just a really yeah. awesome thing to have. So yeah, because I, I think it's a very strong. It point. was roughly. Um, I forget the context of it, but it was like an off afternoon. It was roughly the middle of December, I want to say. And so no one goes to the zoo. Like, Capron obviously doesn't get the foot traction of some of the other bigger zoos in New England as is. But, mm -hmm. you know, go during winter, it is dead. Like, there is no one there. So, you know, Leaf and I were like the only two in the park, essentially. So, like, when we went to like some of these uh, habitats. They were, uh, yeah, the animals would come right up to us. So obviously, like w like we mentioned, the hornbill wasn't on either, but we went into the Asian uh, water monitor habitat just to check it out or whatever. And yeah, he was, he went up right up to the glass. He was swimming around. He like, you know, did a couple of laps around his uh, like enclosure, which I, you know, I want to save that for like when we get there. I love his enclosure mm. relative to most other areas in the zoo. And that's just because it's weirdly enough the most themed habitat out of anywhere in Capron for no oh, reason. Yeah. Um, but obviously, you know, continuing uh, with the the hornbill habitat, you know, I was able to play around with like my exhibit prop pack prior to me updating everything. So this was using the old versions of the hitboxes and stuff. So it was oh, actually gosh. harder to build and stuff. And. Luckily, this isn't a functional habitat, or else, yeah, that would have been really bad because <laughs> the animals wouldn't have been able to move. But I fear the day when we get functional, if we get functional birds, mind you. Yeah, like um, how they're going to Just because operate. habitats like this, like they're so tiny. I don't see them working in like realistic standards, and that's what's kind of getting me scared yeah, about exactly. a possible aviary pack. That's, that's kind of where I've always been, where... We can even see it with some of the the smaller animals that are in the game currently, like meerkats and stuff. The game just doesn't suit them very well because they're <laughs> the the props and stuff that you use to build their habitats are just way too big, and so they you either make an enclosure that's ridiculously large for something small like a fennec fox or a meerkat, or you make something like you know that is appropriately sized, but they can't move or anything. <laughs> Yeah. Just because of how the game operates. And so, yeah, birds are going to be a thing where if we get flying birds, yeah, I don't even want to know. Because they're going to be clipping into everything or unable to move. <laughs> and, like, they're going to be trying to navigate from branches and perches and stuff. And it's just not going to work out. And, I, yeah, yeah, as jank as it will be, I still do think it's a very integral, integral, wow, a uh, very important part of Zoos, of zoos yeah, and exactly. Planet Zoo in particular, so I'm just very optimistic about it. I know it probably won't work the best, but still, I think it'll be pretty fun when we actually get that. Yeah, and then obviously we have... So, the um, the Hornbill habitat has like this little extension on it that you know <laughs> I had to build, and it was... Uh, another pain because, again, we have Chainlink now, which is awesome. I can do whatever I want. But the issue is, you can see at the top, it's a slanted chain link, so I don't have triangle pieces. So I forget how I got around that. I think I just kind of like covered it up, yeah, like with yeah. the um, the wood and stuff, and then just kind of like implied the, oh look, there's a, there's a thing here. Now around this portion, so the entrance to this particular habitat has what I can only describe as a very detailed area that for whatever reason I decided to replicate. <laughs> and by replicating it, I ended up realizing, oh, this would be too tall. <laughs> the green area would be too tall. So what I ended up doing, and you can see me doing it here because I was debating doing it for a while, is I needed to modify the entire uh, uh, height of the roof of this particular building. So I wrote entrance and, you know, I at first ignored the roof. I was just kind of like, okay, yeah, you know, that's fine. But, you know, it can't be that bad, right? And so I did this. I was like, okay, you know, there you go. It looks kind of close, but it doesn't look as accurate as I wanted. Mm -hmm. And so my my brain just kind of took over and eventually I'm just like, okay, we're going we're gonna to fix this entire building, aren't we? And then I don't even want to, like, I, I used that for some kind of sign. I don't know what it was, though. But here we go. This is me <laughs> taking all of the roof that I built 
from the otter episode and just yep let's just shrink it so that it actually fits oh, yup yep, just so that it fits appropriately and as you can see by doing that I had to compensate for everything. So the the roof detailing that I did, the chimneys and the the uh, ventilation and the lights and all of that, that all had to be migrated downward to compensate, which again, it makes it more accurate because I tried to get the building as accurately as possible. What mm -hmm. I found out, and this is what's funny, we have essentially made a two, uh, a, would it be a two to one? Uh, uh, recreation like Our, doubling the size yes or? we have actually doubled the size of capron from what yes. it really is so i found that out so even though a lot of people would look at the habitats we're building as like wow that's ridiculously like you know small um actually no it's actually half the size in real life <laughs> so those who were like wow that's a small lion habitat or a sloth bear well it's half the size in real life <laughs> That's what I found out from doing this entire uh, building. So It's so weird looking at it, too, because when you put it in that perspective, if you look over at Just Goron, who handles Bexer Bergen, uh, that's a 1 point, or like 1.5 to 1 or whatever, yep. where he actually builds smaller than it actually is. Yeah, exactly. To fit that entire damn zoo in there. And meanwhile, over here, we're kind of like... We're making it we larger make than bigger. it actually should be. <laughs> Um, just because we need to, you know, as you can see here, I'm just trying to get all that detail in the best I can, mm -hmm. but obviously we don't have that many tiny pieces. So, you know, to make room for the Asian water monitor habitat, uh, I had to do a few things. So the first thing is I referenced Dill for what the back of the building kind of looked like vaguely. So still like kind of inform me like this is what the old habitat shape was this is the hallway that you'd go down this is where the habitat was mm -hmm. next up so that that kind of you know if there's ever a, a future habitat there or whatever it's kind of compensated but not perfectly so i mostly did it because the asian water monitor habitat has a lot of detail a lot of detail that I needed to cram in, you know, this is obviously a uh, eight meter by eight meter box. It should be a four meter by four meter box. <laughs> yeah. So imagine if I took a single wall piece in the game and just made a cube and I was like, cool, I need to add water and a dock and um, some giant decals and billboards and bricks and all of this stuff that you see. So like, for instance, we're starting off. Uh, the Asian water monitor, believe it or not, has water in its habitat. So, <laughs> so the first thing that I had to do was actually lay out the water for the habitat as a base, because mm -hmm. obviously it's a pain to, you know, work with water and stuff. So I needed to make a cube of glass that was just going to contain all of the water for the habitat first and foremost. Next up, I actually kind of started doing the um, the viewing platform. So. Uh, funnily enough, there's a kind of like a fake tree next to the Asian water monitor habitat that is, uh, it was done by Rob. Rob actually showed me his little, he has basically a little tool for sculpting <laughs> that he, he does, right. he does trees so often that he made a tool that is the bark texture and he just rolls it onto the uh, plaster and stuff so that it actually gets the texture. So that's what the tree is made out of. And... Luckily, the uh, in-game item tree that I feel like not many people use for obvious reasons because it's kind of ugly, mm -hmm. it worked really well. So that was actually really good. Then to get the wall right, I think I used some of the Jurassic World Evolution. I'm sorry I'm using so many mods, but like to get it right, I was just like, okay. Like, if, if we're using them, I was just telling Forge this in the uh, Bonita Springs episode, if we're using mods, we gotta go, like... Yeah, extremely just hard. With all, that. Yeah, you might as well go all out to you make know, the get use some of, of that. stuff. So you saw me just place down a huge chunk of wall. So that entire wall section, I know it. You know, I'm kind of glossing over it for the entire time lapse, but I built all of that for uh, I want to say seven months ago. Yeah, <laughs> that entire thing with like it. the little lizard and the the face and stuff. I built all of this way before you know we were doing you know uh, capering again so it was done i, I want to say before the llama habitat because that's when i started doing it 
So mm-hmm. obviously I don't have that recorded because that was from seven months ago. But I hope you forgive me because it was essentially me just making a really detailed wall and adding all of those little decals and stuff that are all over this habitat. So I it guess looks we can... very good for what it is. So for we can... being such a small scale. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And like I said, that entire thing would have normally needed to be crammed into a single wall piece. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so forgive me if it's a bit, you know, it's still not that detailed, but it's pretty good compared to what it should be. So uh, I actually want to talk about the detailing now because like that's a huge portion of this habitat. So the Asian water monitor habitat is, I, I think it's safe to say the most themed habitat in the zoo. And I guess it was supposed to be, it, it apparently was more themed back in the day. So the habitat designer for this particular habitat actually like kind of gave us like some insight on it. There used to be a bunch of other Asian themed like adventure props that used to go in here. And there still are quite a bit. There's, as you'll see, crates and urns and fallen brick pieces and stuff. And on the wall next to the viewing area, there's actually, like, kind of, like, photos of, like, Indonesia and stuff of that nature. I love that little photo board, yeah. Yep. And so, you know, it's a very, very themed habitat. Obviously, it's not, you know, the the craziest thing, you know, by, by zoom metrics or anything. But it's kind of cool how much little detail he got into a single habitat. Mm-hmm. And so we're actually going to pause right here. Sorry about that, everyone. We're back. But essentially what I was saying before is, like, this is the um, kind of most detailed habitat in the zoo. And I tried to get as many as much of the detail in as possible obviously i needed a lot of modded pieces for this just to get the detail working but i tried my best so what i ended up doing is as you can see i used a lot of like australian planks and just used the thin thin piece of them to Mm -hmm. get the kind of wooden scaffolding design that they have on the habitat and stuff and I used just a mixture of different rock types and stuff to get the kind of faux rock wall that they have, but part of the issue I had when doing this is the rock wall is obviously split up amongst, you know, it's very flat. And the other thing is, remember, on the other side of this particular wall is the backstage holding for the otters. So I'm already (laughs) scared to look over at that Yep. Now, luckily, I think I have enough room that there is still a trade center, I believe, that, you know, Mm -hmm. accommodates for the otters and the Asian water monitor placement, because, like, obviously I needed to place the monitor in as well. Um, But, you know, it's it's obviously a bit rough. Mm -hmm. So, the other thing, I, I finally found a use for that flagstone that I used, or I created for the uh, Jurassic World Evolution mod pack, and it's like, just for this like rock wall that they have on the right hand side of the habitat that kind of looks exactly like this, weirdly enough, and so perfect. it actually worked out pretty well. And then I had to compensate by doing like a couple of different things. Um, Cause I'm trying, I was trying to get everything right. So at first I was like, okay, Um, The Jurassic World one is close, but I want to be even more accurate. So then I decided (laughs) to do the entire thing brick by brick. (laughs) Oh my god! So I basically took that Jurassic World evolution wall and I just remade it, but using, I think, temple pieces so that it fit in with the other bricks that I had already used from, like I said, seven months ago. (laughs) Exactly, yeah. So I, th- I... I think it does have a lot more charm to it, too. Yeah, exactly. And plus, like, the shading on it, it works a lot better for smaller exhibits like this. Yeah, exactly. And then I needed, I think, I, I so I, I built, like, a little bit of the brick wall, and then I detailed it a bit to, like, you know, fill mm-hmm. out some of the gaps and stuff. But, like, I honestly, I need to see how much the Asian water monitor mod is going to be able to actually swim around and stuff because it's obviously a lot of different tiny pieces crammed I, into a very small area. I'm yeah, sure I wouldn't can, even count on them moving around. I'm there. guessing it's going to sit down and just sit there <laughs> yep. and that's it. But you know what? I'm, I'm kind of fine with that just to say that we did it. 
And, you know, I can actually talk about the Asian uh, water monitor a bit. Because, weird enough, it was one of the most fun mods that I worked on for Reptiles. Because mm -hmm. I didn't have to really worry about changing the normal map or anything of it. It was entirely working on the texturing. Which, mm -hmm. I will say, that wasn't fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if you're actually a Pride member on my YouTube channel, if uh, I'm going to be releasing a video kind of soon, probably roughly when this video comes out, that's going to be a companion episode to this, where I'm going to show you how I made the Asian water monitor, and it's just a kind of me texturing, you know, video. It's just me going through and individually placing different, like, ornate patterns for the monitor, just because it was... It's a, it's a very complex creature, so uh, I just wanted to throw that out there because that's probably going to be a thing that'll also be going up if, for those who are interested in the modding side of it. Mm -hmm. um, back to the habitat, ivy everywhere, hanging from the ceiling. Like I said, th there was so much little stuff I crammed into this habitat just to like get it as close as I could, and I was like messing with. A mixture of like the construction pieces and foliage and a few new mods and stuff like just to get whatever I could to like kind of emulate what I wanted out of this because they you know um, I forgot about this so there's also a window between the Asian water monitor and I think it leads out to the hornbill habitat oh. so I think it, it, it's either that or it's a window into the indoor holding of the hornbill, but it's something kind of like that, where it's like a window that bleeds into a back room where the hornbill is, I think. Um, <laughs> don't quote me on that, I don't know, but there is a window there, and I actually got to use the emissive wall for once, or a uh, piece, because I, I wanted the light to bleed in or whatever, and it actually looks pretty cool. Like, as you just saw, that actually looked kind of neat. And normally we don't really get to use stuff like that, but I think it worked out pretty good. And once again, here comes the exhibit prop pack to the rescue, because otherwise I don't think I would have been able to make a heat lamp. So that was very, very useful. So now I am going to be working on the kind of uh, ramp that leads into the pool of the, the monitor habitat, and it's kind of like a... Um, standard, like, almost like a staircase that you'd find in, like, a normal pool. Mm -hmm. And it's just for the, the monitor to get in and out of the water a little bit easier. So, it's, you know, pretty good. He has a pretty good life, I'm not gonna lie. He just chills there, uh, you know. Yeah. He has a heated building to himself. He can hang out here year-round. He's got a pool. I'm very jealous of him. <laughs> you I, know? I would, I would live in that habitat, I'm gonna be completely honest it's just i mean yeah you just hang out and you get a heated pool all day that's you know oh, it's, yeah. it's pretty good it's like a hot tub just be year round so it's kind of cool <laughs> um so okay th this is funny so i was trying to figure out what the best log to use for there's two large wooden supports in the center of the habitat part of mm -hmm. the theming and i was trying to figure out what to use and as you see, I'm going through, like, every mod I have, every thing. Oh my gosh. Thing. Ultimately, I think I settled on, so Frontier 1 in this regard. I settled on the North American, or the North African logs. Because <laughs> I needed stuff that would fit the right, like, dimensions. So, like, as you can see, they're, they need to be, like, tied at, like, each end and stuff. And luckily, Frontier's things, uh, the rope fit theirs perfectly and stuff. And okay, I can I complain really quickly about the rope? Sure. I used to be able to search up a rope yep. every single time and get the rope pieces. <laughs> Ever since the Europe pack came out, it's bugged me yep. how often I can't get that. That's fair. It's the same thing as, um, like, if you type in, like, primitive now, and you just get the entire alphabet. Oh my god. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, where they're like, oh yeah, hi, primitive pieces. I know you were looking for, like, rectangles and stuff. How about you get the entire Noto font library and yep. the entire, you know, uh, um, what's the other one? Boogaloo font and Boogaloo, stuff. Yeah. And I'm um, sure the mod packs don't really help at all, too. No, they I don't. They uh, the fact that, that. <laughs> that, you know, obviously Safari Pack added two more fonts and then I just added another font to Outback Pack. Yeah, no, it's not helpful Ooh. at all. 
It's um, amazing. I love how like in depth you're going. Yes, like, every the fact that I did the ceiling this, the as well. Roof. Yeah, yeah. And this is where like look at how difficult this was. I was towing a fine line here, where I needed it to be a precise height, mm -hmm. but. You know, I needed to, you know, still have room there that I would be able to get detail in. So, like, as you can see, like, I wanted... They have little, like, uh, grooves in the uh, yeah. the dock. So I needed to, you know, emulate that the best I could. Uh, and the crates. Thank, I ble bless, blessed Safari Pack for giving me some crates. I wouldn't have been able to do them otherwise. Uh, and That's then one of my it, favorite things in there. So <laughs> like in the real with the gold. Yeah. So in real life, they have a crate with a, a pot inside of it. Um, so obviously, I couldn't do that. So I, I ended up just kind of having like a crate with like another on the ground to kind of emulate that the best I could. But you know, obviously, you know, you can't get everything perfect. But I, I think I did a good job. It's certainly oh, right recognizable. Um, so now this is where the fun began. So I, you know, for this wall is pretty simple. Like it's nothing crazy. It's pretty much just like a blackish dark green wall, but they have two major things. So the first thing is a custom billboard that I, <laughs> it, this was the most difficult billboard for me to uh, get a picture of because obviously normally I'd be able to, you know, stand back and get a clean view of the entire thing. But this building is so small. Again, it's ha this is twice the size of it in real life. And so what I ended up doing in real life is you can see there's kind of like a little lip on the, um, the uh, viewing area. I stood on that and just tried to take a photo as clearly as possible. And obviously it had a bunch of glare and stuff. But I had to then go in and Photoshop and manually try to like cut out as much of the the glare and stuff as I could. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's not perfect. You can still see if you look at the glare right now, you can kind of see the reflection of like one of the signs and stuff. But I tried the best I could. But if you actually like you know have the time to like look at that and stuff, it's really cool. They have like Sumatran rhinos in there and Asian water buffalo and like a bunch of other like cool Asian not, animals. Not on the Asian water monitor exhibit, but on the poster board. <laughs> yes, on the poster. I think we should clarify that. That'd be really cool though if we got Sumatran rhino inside of this building. Oh yeah. Um, but you're uh, even going forward with like yep, a fire. Yeah. So the Love only that. thing on this wall of note is two things they have a fire safety kit and they have a fire alarm and so i was like well, i gotta do it obviously so i tried my best to essentially and i want to shout out leave for the the outback pack because the null uh sign was very good for this so i was able to basically make the little fire link facp logo um in really tiny detail and i tried my best to get it as close as possible um with you know kind of it still being a slightly uh stylized version of the equivalent but i think it actually worked That's out pretty wild. well um then i found this off the workshop i apologize i, I don't know who made this but it's a little mm -hmm. fire alarm so um there's a lot of fire alarms in here there's actually three of these which i, I don't know why <laughs> You should only need one, but yeah, they have three of them for some reason. That's cool. Awesome. Um, Good for them. And then, uh, yeah, finally, I think the last thing in this particular habitat, I added a uh, floor. You know, that's that's of good. Of course. I added the root to the tree, and then I believe I added that little step stool uh, that I was referring to earlier that, you know, they actually, like, you know, that I stepped on to get this photo. Then the other thing is just me being a perfectionist. I realized, oh, this isn't wooden planks. It's actually like, uh, like logs essentially. Yep. So I, I, I just swapped those out really quickly for something a little bit slightly more accurate. But I will say, I, I thought I did a good job. It's pretty did, good yeah. for how small this area is, but how much detail I was able to cram into the entire building. So that mm. that is definitely nice. Um, but yeah, here you go. There's that little step stool lip that there I was talking about. There we go. Um, it's for little kids to see over the, uh, you know, the glass, but, you know, I Or for it. adults to make a zoo <laughs> Yes, exactly. Um, 
And then I, yeah, I, I don't think I did anything else too crazy. I think I just added like a couple of extra little details. Added that little side door, which I believe they used access to get to the otters. Mm -hmm. um, and then I added a roof to the building so that it all fit uh, nice and tight. And then you can see there, I think the, uh, the fire extinguisher or fire warning thing was poking out. So later on, I cover that up. Place down a Steve Irwin to make sure that everything is up to scale. And Always scale, have to. I mean, twice the scale. <laughs> um, but everything was pretty good. So now, here is the fun part. So I had to uh, kind of manipulate this area so that we could get the, the correct pathway mm -hmm. while also maintaining, you know, I didn't, I needed the mulch and trees to not bleed into the building, and I needed the fire extinguisher to not bleed outside of the building perfect so this is uh one one of the things that i feel like is kind of um not talked about much with recreations is when you have a lot of this stuff like tightly compact trying your best to like hide stuff that shouldn't be like either inside a building or outside a building because mm -hmm. it's pretty common that you'd have like details like trees and stuff but it's hard to like get leaves to not show up inside of buildings where they shouldn't be, or um, in this particular case, the fire, you know, area. I, I forget if I end up removing them outright or if I, I think I might have cleverly tried to hide them using a bush, but I'm not positive. But anyways, basically, you know, got to use my Brazil nuts because we don't have, you know, my big oak trees. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, we are on to our final habitat, which uh, wasn't as crazy as the other two. And that is the golden lion tamarind habitat for our now, you know, beloved Cortez who passed away. Um, er, when did he die? I want to say December. It was, yeah, it was last year, definitely. I yep. just forget when exactly. Yeah, I want to say it was missing. around December. It was in the middle of winter, though, for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, since this is meant to, this entire recreation is kind of like a time capsule of Capron, I still thought it was appropriate to, you know, do his habitat as it was during the, when we went on our reference trip in fall. So from there, I basically made... Uh, all of the little enrichment I did. I liked this. This was cute. I thought um, he had a little bucket that was oh. like blue for feeding. Um, and so I, I made it out of gutter pieces. So I thought that was nice. And I just used a ton of different types of logs and stuff to get all the climbing frames. Uh, that If there's one thing that I gotta ask Frontier for, because we always have to ask stuff for stuff, <laughs> just more logs and climbing frames, like vines and stuff, uh, would be really appreciated. And just mm -hmm. the more vague you can make them, the better. Because right now, like, our options are kind of slim to none. We have a couple of the wavy vines that you can kind of see me using for the, um, I think it's from the African log set. And then past that, like, they added a couple of new ones, which you can see me using here. But they're all different sizes. They're all different shapes and different textures. So the, none of them are good on their own. But Even if they just make a few templates like let's just say faux branch 01 yep. all the way to 06 and just swap out the textures for all of them that'd be extremely exactly like I, I just don't know why they didn't do that like it was kind of odd that it's like why did you make six individual textures for six individual logs mm -hmm. I, and the I same thing goes for like the birch branches too yep. just all the pieces are there i'm more than happy with clones in that regard yeah where exactly. we get a lot more variety official variety mind you exactly but. but that pretty much brings us to the end of today's episode so thank you all for watching today's video if you enjoy it you know definitely like comment and subscribe and uh enjoy all of the uh animals so i i'm out of you know respect i'm only going to show off the asian uh water monitor and hornbill but you mm -hmm. know definitely you can also check out the golden lion tamarind mod i'll have that in my description as well so thank you all for watching, and uh, check out Leaf's channel. Uh, hey. It's in the description. We still haven't right, decided awesome. on who the, who's uh, the, doing the next episode yet. So nope, we still don't. You know, gotta check both. We'll figure check it both. Out. We promise. Make sure you're subscribed to both of us, and we, you'll find out then. Oh yes. But take care, everyone. Bye, everyone.